In John 5, 19-29, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and Jews after being confronted about healing the man at the pool of Bethesda on the Sabbath. We see that Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, when Jesus says this, he is about to say something that is absolutely true. So we should all pay attention to what comes next. Truly, truly means amen. And when Jesus says this, he often meant that what is being said is true and is attested to by firsthand knowledge. Jesus is recorded saying truly, truly 26 times in the Gospel of John. Each time he shares a precious truth with us about who he is and oftentimes about how to have everlasting life with him. In this particular instance, he does both. Jesus reveals the truth that he does nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. Imagine being so close with God that you could say you only do what you see him doing. I think that we can have a relationship with God where he shows us what he is doing and what he would have us do. But because of the broken state of sin, I do not think we can say that we only do what we see the Father doing. Jesus then goes on to say that the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he is doing, and greater works than these will he show the Son, so that you may marvel. The reason God reveals what he is doing to the Son is because he loves him. This means that the Father can and will reveal what He is doing through us if we are listening. One way we still know He is doing this today is through the prompting of the Holy Spirit and through His Word. He says that greater things He will reveal to the Son and that they will marvel because of them. Jesus then goes on to foretell what those things will be because God is the only one who can perfectly foreshadow what is going to happen in life. He says that the Father raises the dead and gives them life. So also will the Son give life to whom He wills. I think Jesus was referring to three things by saying this. First, He was foreshadowing His own resurrection. The second is those He raised from the dead like Lazarus, the little girl, and the many others who rose at his resurrection. And the third thing I think he was foreshadowing was the resurrection of everyone, some to the resurrection of life and others to judgment. Jesus then goes on to say, For the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. All judgment has been given to him, so they should honor him just as they honor the Father. This definitely made the Pharisees mad because Jesus just said that he was to be honored like they honored the Father. He said that if you honor the Son, then you honor the Father who sent him. After this, Jesus said another truly, truly statement. This time he was telling us how to live forever with him. He says, I say to you, whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. If you would like to pass from death to life, all you have to do is to admit that you are a sinner, repent of your sins, believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and God raised him from the dead. Then confess him as Lord and Savior of your Jesus then dives deeper into the resurrection that will happen at his second coming, telling us that the good will be resurrected to life and the evil will be resurrected to judgment. What determines which you are is not your actions, but your trust in Jesus. I pray that today you will put your trust in Jesus so that your resurrection will be to the resurrection of life. Because whether you believe it or not, you will rise again. And your decision about Jesus during this life will determine where you spend eternity. You need to make sure you are right with God. Because we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the punishment for sin is death. So this week, make sure you are right with God. As Christians, we should seek to draw so close to God that we feel Him moving and follow His lead. The best way to grow in your relationship with God is through prayer and reading the Bible. Click here to see last week's Bible study or click here to see the rest of the Bible studies in the series.